Hello, welcome back to another edition of The Lead. I'm your host, Cody Johnson, and today I'm going to be starting a three-part series about three players in particular that I feel are the unicorns of the 2022 NFL Draft. The first player I'm going to be talking about today is defensive tackle out of Georgia, Jordan Davis. 6'6", played at 360 pounds during the season, but actually dropped to 340 for the combine. Uh, ran a 4.78. Uh, for reference, Vita Vea, one of the better defensive tackles in the league, is 6'4, 340 pounds, and ran a 5.140. So that shows you the blend of size and athleticism that we haven't, we don't, we can't compare to, right? His skill set isn't necessarily that of a unicorn, but it, it can change what you do on defense. Now I'm going to get into some of his his pros and then his cons. Uh, the first pro, obviously, we all know, is his run defense, which, again, with his skill set, isn't necessarily uncommon, but for a guy his size, athleticism, it, it can change what you do fundamentally on defense in the run game. For example, the, the, there's a play against Georgia where he is one tech, obviously, and the, the guard and the left tackle are down blocking on him, and the, the guard's about 325 pounds, the tackle is about 310 pounds. Two guys coming down on a down block, and Jordan Davis stonewalls them, uh, stays in place for the linebacker to come over the top and make the tackle. Another play you can look at is versus Kentucky in 2021. It's a QB sneak. Again, Jordan Davis is the one tech. Stonewalls four guys to keep the, the quarterback in the backfield. Loss of play, uh, loss of yardage, loss of down, turn over the ball, right? So that's the kind of stuff you, you, you see with Jordan Davis. The, the stuff that, while it's comparable, not everybody can do it, especially guys at his size. Now, I kind of want to touch on the cons, which two of these I think are way overplayed. Um, and then one serious thing that I would like to see improved over his NFL career. Now, this first con, I'm actually going to transition into how I think he fits in Levy's scheme. And the first, so quote-unquote, con is that he's slow off the ball. Now, when Georgia was running their defense, they're running a, a two-gapping system, right? So it's a read and react system where he reads the center, reacts, and fills the A-gap. And either he fills it himself or he holds the offensive lineman in the A-gap. So where the running back can't run into that gap, if they do, he makes the play. Now, if you go watch the game against Kentucky where they weren't doing so much of two-gapping stuff, it was more one gap or uh, fill your gap which is what Lovey's system is in a 4-3. He had a great game, and it was not slow off the ball at all. Uh, this first play versus, uh, again, at the one tech, snap of the ball, immediately crosses the face of the center. He's so fast off the, off the snap that the, the guard can't even react to get over the top and block him. He's in the gap in an instant, makes the tackle, uh, no gain, right? That's going to transition into Lovey's defense because that's what he's going to be asked to do a lot. Now, there's also this play, again, against Kentucky. Uh, he, he slides right, fills fills the A-gap, holds the center in place, and waits for the running back to commit. Great discipline here. Waits for the running back to commit. Once he does commit, he crosses the face of the center with no hesitation, no uh, resistance at all. Guard's not there to, to double-team him and makes a tackle. Another no gain or loss of yard. Right, so those are the kind of things that uh, that he's going to be good at if he is in Lovey's system that they're going to ask him to do, and then that also transition transitions into natural double teams, which is going to free up his linebackers tremendously, and, and that's something that can be overstated. That the fact that you have that guy in the middle to free up linebackers again is going to change what you can do fundamentally on defense. Those guys running free, making tackles it's paramount for Lovey's defense, right? So the next the next con is the snap count, right? Which uh, if you look on average, he played roughly 25 snaps a game. But obviously when you're playing at 360 and you're 6'6 and you're moving the way he does, that's, that's a lot of air intake. Obviously you're going to be worn down a little bit, might be a little bit sluggish during games, but I think also dropping 20 pounds, and if he can keep that weight during the season, I don't I don't think that's an issue anymore. Um, 340 pounds, 20 pound difference is a lot for defensive linemen, right? And, and then you also have to consider the fact that Georgia's defense 
was the best defensive rotational unit in, in college football this year. They had guys, five stars all over the defensive line. Guys that you rotate in and out because you keep your top guys fresh. And that proved uh, to be the case when they used Jordan Davis about 45 snaps in the uh, Michigan game. So, for, for comparison, they, I think they roughly ran 70 snaps in that game. That's over 50%. Vita Vea had played 50% of the Buck snaps last year. So, it's not really an issue for me. And then, again, when Georgia is blowing – nine out of 12 teams out by over 21 points each game. There's no reason to be risking your top players for the uh, risking your top players getting injured when you can have them for the playoffs when it really matters. Right. So I think that's overblown. Um, I think I not completely overblown. I think you will have to work at it a little bit in the NFL, but also having Roy Lopez on the Texans is going to be tremendous. That, that rotation between those two at the one tag is going to be tremendous. If that is what we end up doing in the draft. So the last con I want to touch on is obviously the pass rushing acumen. Now, he obviously is not the most tremendous pass rushing interior defensive lineman. Like like when you you look at Kenny Clark from Green Bay, that's what you want as a pass rusher from the one tech. Now, Georgia didn't ask him to do that a lot. So the um, it remains to be seen what the ceiling is for that. But again, when that's not what I'm drafting him for, right? I'm drafting him to be able to change what you do fundamentally on defense, specifically in the run game. Um, not only that, I think he's a guy that can get you that DJ Reader, uh, st- the DJ Reader stat line for for sacks, right, or pressures that four sacks, uh, however many pressures he did. I, and that's all I need from him because he's changing what we do fundamentally on defense in the run game. Uh, which changes what you do in the pass game. And I also don't think you necessarily need him to be straight up passing or pass rushing in that sense when he's a guy that you can run stunts off of with your defensive lineman, your outside linebackers, you're blitzing with your middle linebackers, a guy that's going to swallow up blockers so those guys can run free to the quarterback. Right. So there's there's potential there for his pass rushing. Uh, obviously, that's the one con I think needs to be worked on a little bit. I'd like to see it develop a little bit more in the NFL. But with that, I am perfectly comfortable with taking him at pick 13. Y'all go down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. And I'll be getting another player out to y'all soon. All right, have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.